Good morning, everybody. Just again on uh, how to heal the sick. How do I get sick people healed? And, uh, uh, you know, why is it that so many people pray for sick people, but not so many people get healed as so many people are prayed for? Okay. So how can I effectively get sick people healed? How can I effectively... see people healed. To understand healing the sick more effectively or getting more effectiveness out of our ministering unto the sick, we've got to understand a few things. First of all, okay, do I going to trust that person to have faith or am I coming with the commission? And that has been the story that I see most people praying for the sick still try to throw the ball into the court of the sick person. Okay, so then it's a prayer of believing together with that person. Then you are not trying to get the sick healed. Okay, so I'll just repeat that. Are you going to trust on that person that is sick to have faith? Or are you going to go with the commission to get that person healed? Okay, so in Matthew chapter 10, as well as in Luke chapter 10, Jesus said the following. He called the disciples unto them and he gave them power and authority. Okay, so we've got to understand. One, Jesus gave them, okay, power and authority. Okay, and to heal the sick. And every disease. And <laughs> to cast our demons. Is it funny if we just read fast, we don't see all the ends what he has given us, okay? So Jesus called the twelve unto them and he gave them power and authority over all sickness and all disease. And he said to them, go heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, freely have received, freely give. Okay? So Jesus didn't say, go ask faith go teach faith go teach them how to rely on god go teach them how to depend on god jesus said, you go you heal you go you set them free you go you get them well okay so it's not a trusting there is a place where we teach people how to live by faith there is a place where we teach people how to trust for healing we is a place where we touch people how jesus came to give you life and give it to you more abundantly but we are coming from a standpoint of we must minister okay so this is what these teachings are about it's not so much as what the person needs is what can i give to the person Okay, so what we did last week, just one or two things. Okay, so that is Matthew 10 and Luke chapter 10. But if you go to Luke chapter 10 and you jump to verse 19, we get the following. Jesus says, I give you all power and all authority over the power of the enemy. Okay, you shall trample on serpents and scorpions and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Okay, now I want to put this in a little bit of a better context. Nothing shall hurt you. Nothing shall hurt you. Okay? What I'm trying to see out of this this morning for anybody that wants to take it, if I go by faith, if I go boldly, if I go trusting, nothing shall hurt me in my venture to get the sick healed. My emotions will not be touched. My body will not be touched. In other words, if I touch a person filled with leprosy, that leprosy is not going to jump on me. If I put my hand under somebody and he's bleeding and I've got cuts on my hand and he's HIV positive, I'm not going to get HIV positive. If I rub my hand over a cancerous sore, it's not going to give me a sore. Nothing shall hurt me when I go to minister to people. I've got the authority. I've got the power to trample on serpents and scorpions. And nothing shall by any means hurt me. So, in other words, don't fear. Okay? No fear has got another word connected to it that is called boldness. Okay? Boldness is an awesome word because the Bible says in Hebrews, do not throw your boldness away, which has a great reward. What type of reward will boldness have? Well, Hebrews chapter 4, Hebrews chapter 10 tells us the reward. Let us come boldly to the throne. Okay? What will we get at the throne? Well, first of all, it's the throne of grace where we receive mercy, chapter 4. Secondly, it's the new way through the blood of Jesus, which he prepared by 
tearing the veil which is his flesh. So we can go directly to the Father. Jesus says in that day, I will not say that I will go for you, but you can go directly to the Father. But you still got to come in my name. So I've got to come boldly, okay? So the boldness is canceling that fear factor. How do you know that if I have boldness, I will get greater answers and I will have not a fear factor? Because in Acts chapter 3, after they healed the, the man that was there by the gate called Beautiful Daily, remember and this man couldn't walk he was carried out daily and he was begging for alms and Peter and, Jay and John, <laughs> Peter and John said silver and gold have I none but such as I have give unto you name of Jesus of Nazareth rise up and walk we know he walked and then the Sanhedrin said you shall not speak in this name again okay and then this is their prayer oh Lord listen to their threatenings and give your servants boldness listening to their threatenings in other words there was a fear factor so listen to their threatenings. But now give your servants boldness, that they may speak your word. Okay? Boldness, speak. To speak your word. Not my word. Your word. With boldness, so that your hand may be stretched out. Okay? So that your hand may be stretched out. To heal. And... <laughs> And, 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 and that signs and wonders. And this is an awesome scripture. And wonders may be wrought in the name of your holy child, Jesus. Is that right? So it's not just to you to say have signs and wonders. The thing there is, there's got to be no fear factor. If you have fear, fear is doubt. Okay? Boldness is trust. It's one thing to have faith, but I must have boldness and trust. Here comes Jesus walking on the water, and Peter says, if it's you, bid me come on the water. Jesus said, come. Peter jumps out of the boat. Man, he's looking on Jesus. He got a word. Okay? Oh, Lord, your word. Here comes the word of the Lord. He walks. And then he starts sinking when he looked at the waves. Mm -hmm. And Peter said, oh, Jesus said, oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? Okay? The word there in the Greek context is, you started by faith. Why did you get a second thought of doubt? Okay? So your first thought was walk. Your second thought, thought was sink, you know? So the second thought made you to doubt, okay? So why did you doubt? Why did you have two thoughts? Why didn't you stick with your f first thought, you know, of trusting, hoping, believing in God? Okay, so nothing shall hurt you, nothing shall harm you. So we've got the, 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 the command to go and heal the sick. So if you go pray for the sick, if you are not sure that you are commissioned by Jesus, please don't waste the sick person's time. You're going to hurt him. Okay, you're going to send him home discouraged and depressed. All right, if you are not sure that you're commissioned by Jesus Christ, don't lay your hands on the sick. Please, 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 please. Okay, so come to the end. We're going to just this morning maybe reach Mark 16. That's a good place to, to reach. But so let's build up to Mark 16. How could I have the assurity of that? So back up a little to last week. We've got to understand that right from the beginning, when God made Adam and Eve, were they perfect, or do you think when Eve came out of the side of Adam, she came hopping along on crutches and said, would you pray for my arthritis? Or, no, you know, or do you think maybe you know, Adam said, wow, man, and they made it woman, or something like that. You know? I don't know what happened. <laughs> You know, do you think, you know, Adam was walking in the garden and said, yeah, I, I, if I can only see better, you know, <laughs> you know, do you think, or do you think they were perfect? Okay, so where they were perfect. So sickness wasn't there in the beginning, neither was sin, neither was death, you know. So the Bible tells us in Romans, because of the offense of one person, sin entered the world. And because of sin, death entered. But before there could be death, there had to be sickness. So the offenses of Adam and of people afterwards produce sin that produces sickness that eventually produces death. So that's a vicious cycle that can be broken by the blood and the name and the price that Jesus Christ paid on the cross. So let's go back to the beginning. In Exodus chapter 6, it's an awesome portion of scripture. God appears unto Moses and he says, Moses, I have appeared. Unto Abram, Isaac, and Jacob, by my name, El Shaddai, the God that is more than enough. But by my name, Jehovah, brackets, my redemptive name, 
which brings about my acts and my wonders, I have not revealed myself to them. So God says, Moses, those people before you, all those patriarchs, they knew a portion of me that I am more than enough. So I'm just a blesser. I'm a blesser. You know, I can give them, I can give them, you know, they can have more than enough. But there's a redemptive name that I have that will bring about. That's the amplifier. That will bring about my acts. My wonders. Okay, and if you take the book of the word Acts, just think of the book of Acts in the New Testament. Okay, put that in your mind when you think of that. Okay, so that's the name Jehovah. Okay, Yahweh, as they would say, that will put you in bondage again. So we don't put you in bondage, so we just have Jehovah. <laughs> From where we have Hallelujah, and we have Elijah, and we have Yah. Okay, so the great Jehovah name of God. But that's where God said, I will reveal myself. He has not yet revealed it. He just said, I will. Okay, so when they came to the waters that were bitter in Exodus chapter 15, the people started moaning and, you know, complaining again. And they said, Moses, now we've got to die. And Moses prayed unto God and God said, take this tree, which refers to the cross of Christ, throw it into the water, which is the people symbolically on the earth. And if you take the cross and put it amongst the people, healing is going to spring forth. It's going to take the bitterness out of them and make them sweet once more. And the water became sweet and God said, I am Jehovah. Rafa, which means the Lord, I am the Lord that healeth thee. Okay? So that's the first time God really reveals himself in his redemptive name unto people on the face of the earth. And in the context, if I'm the Lord that healeth thee, he said something first. He says, I will put no diseases on you. Okay, so I've got to understand that if I want to understand God wants to heal me, I first got to understand he will put no diseases on me. So otherwise I'm going to be double minded. How can I pray for God to heal me while I think maybe God is teaching me? You know, if I think God is teaching me and I go to a hospital, I'm a rebel. Because say the doctor maybe get what God is teaching me off me, then he is taking the lessons out of my life. Then he's against God. Now we are two against God, you know. I've got this arthritis, but I'm sure God is just teaching me because since I've got this arthritis, I slow down and I get a chance to speak to so many people. Brother, you've got to ask God to give you arthritis in both legs. I mean, you can do double the amount of evangelistic work. (laughs) But people come and say, they they are not sure. So in this context of will he put it on or will he take it off? What will he do? And a good scripture there would be the book of Acts. Chapter 10, verse 38, which is Peter in Cornelius' house. He says, concerning Jesus of Nazareth, how God anointed him with the Holy Ghost and with power. He went about doing good, healing all, comma, that were oppressed of the devil. Okay, so here's Jesus. He's healing all, okay? Because the devil had them. Just my own words. (laughs) Okay? So whenever Jesus healed, he always said, oh, this is the work of the Father. The Father said, I must do it. So would the Father stand up against the Father? Would the Father give you sickness and then come take it away and say, now I taught you? You know, I mean, that would be a wicked Father. Okay, so we got to understand, have we got a commission? Or are we going to trust the other person's faith? we got to understand that God don't want us to have fear but boldness. Boldness in the fact that he paid the price, he did the work. Boldness in the fact that his redemptive name, the first time he reveals himself is, I will not put sickness on people, but I am the Lord that healeth thee. So if I understand this sickness is not from God, but I am from the kingdom of God, I'm going to remove this sickness now. And I've got to have the boldness to do it and no fear. Okay? So let's just throw a few scriptures in through the Old Testament to help us understand, okay? One that will help you after Exodus 15 would be, let's just forget that one. Let's do Deuteronomy 7 verse 15 says the following. I will put no sicknesses upon you. Huh? God says, I will put none of these diseases will I put on you. I will take away from your midst. It's more or less the same as he said in Exodus. I will take away all sickness. Again, I will put no sickness on you. 
I mean, that is an awesome statement, people. So if I don't know this, how am I going to minister to people if I don't know this? Okay, Psalm 103. Come on, that one we can all quote by heart. What does Psalm 103 says? One, two, three. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget none of his good benefits. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities? Oh, man, we believe that. Oh, is there any hand tonight? You want to receive Jesus as your Savior? Tonight, if you come to the cross, Jesus is going to wash all your sin away. Okay, if you are in Christ now, you're going to be a new creature. The old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Do you want to receive Jesus? Now remember, brothers and sisters, after this prayer, all your sins are forgiven. But this word says, bless him who forgives all your iniquities and heals all your diseases. Why don't we tell them tonight if you come to Jesus, he's going to heal all your diseases. Okay, we, oh, you know, we can't see the sin thing because this guy looks so holy in his suit, you know. But we see the cancer hanging on his eye. Now we're going to tell him he's also going to take away now what about the full gospel what about everything that jesus has paid the price for okay verses one to three he not only takes away all your iniquities the same price is he takes away all your so he takes away all your sin plus all your sickness okay all okay he removes all otherwise jesus paid a half a price so we go to to get this thing backed up we have isaiah 53 verse 5 He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. A full package deal. Wounded for your transgressions. There's your spirit man. The chastisement of your peace, there's your soul man, was upon him. By his stripes you were healed, there's your body man. There's your whole being being provided for in the redemptive work of Jesus Christ. It's good to say the scripture, but do we know it if we go and minister to the sick people? Okay, do we really know it? Psalm 107 is a good one that we can add to that one. And this was for the children of Israel. Remember in Numbers chapter 20 and 21 when the serpents bit them and he said, you know, put that serpent on the pole. And then again, uh, Jesus says that to Nicodemus as Moses lifted up the serpent. So the son of man must be lifted up to do what? Okay, to get healing. So if I look at the crucified Christ where he paid the price, healing is my portion. But I've got to know it for me so that I can minister to others. And in Psalm 107, Psalm 105, 6 and 7, he tells about their desert walking. And how we wanted to bless them and how they were hard. How they repented, how we blessed them. How they hardened their heart, how we withdrew. That's that psalm. But in 107 verse 20, he says the following. He sent his word. Okay. He sent his word. To heal them and, oh man, I love all these ands, and to deliver, and to deliver them. Man, this is awesome. From all, I like all the alls here, destruction. Okay, so he sent his word to heal them and deliver them from all destruction. That's what happened continuously in the desert. But take it from the desert and jump to John chapter 1. Okay, the word, in the beginning was the word. This word became flesh. Okay, take that word and take it to John chapter 10 verse 10. The thief comes to steal, kill and destroy. I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. No more stealing, killing and destruction. But everlasting, immortal, eternal, abundant life. Okay, sickness is not abundant life. Okay? If I have a pain, I don't live. I exist. If I struggle with a disease and a sickness, man, I'm not living. I'm existing. God wants you there uh, if you are listening to this stuff. You've got to live, but you've got to understand this for yourself so to minister to other people. So I'm starting again. Do you know you are commissioned and sent of God to go and heal the sick? Go heal the sick. Go cleanse the lepers. Or are we going to just pray for them, trusting that maybe I've got a lucky strike? Maybe I'm getting the thing right this morning. And if he's healed, my goodness, I'm going to feel good and he's going to feel good. What about I'm going on purpose. I'm on a mission. I've been commissioned. I've got the anointing of the Holy Spirit upon me. And because of the anointing, the yoke shall be destroyed. I'm going on purpose. I'm going to get this guy out of this wheelchair today. I'm not going to hope and have. I go and I say, sir, look at me. Come on, come on. Look at me. Look at me. You know? And. If you don't get his attention, if you can't contact the man, if there's nothing, don't let him drain your faith. Leave him and go to the next one. Sometimes some people just need to be skipped. And I don't know why the day will come where they will be raised. 
But until now, there's, if you stop at a person where there's no connection, you drain your own faith. You know, and you stand there. Oh, Father, come help me. Let's agree. All the church agree. Now you have everybody and everybody's faith get drained. You know, and after half an hour, this guy is rolling on the floor. He's getting hurt. You look in his eyes, still no contact. Pray where you got a contact. Pray where you got a connection. Pray where you feel you're making sense. The people must believe you. I mean, they can't see God. That's what God said to Branham. If you can get the people to believe you, nothing will be impossible to you. You must get them to believe, hey, I've got the power. You saw Saturday night, all those people there? I mean, we didn't know so many got healed till we look at the video afterwards. Come, look at me. So look at me, look at me. I've got the power to set you free. There's going to be the people that are sent. By what I do not know. But they are there to drain your faith. And those are the people that you don't pay attention to. I don't care how sick they are. I don't care how old they are. If you come there and you feel no connection, just say, we bless this woman, Father, in Jesus' name. Don't get connected to disbelief, unbelief, doubt, and fear, and anxiety. Don't get connected to sickness. It's faith in God that heals. All right? So here for today, this is what we close with. Jesus says, for those that believe, these signs shall follow. Are you a believer? Then signs are your portion. He didn't say, for those you get to believe, you will help them to believe with you, that you will pray with them so that they will believe you so that they will get healed. (laughs) No, these signs shall follow them. They shall lay hands on the sick. And the people that get hands laid on, they shall recover. Okay, so we've got the commission, go and lay hands. Trust the perfect finished work of Christ. Know that he has completed the work. Know he paid the price. He died on the cross. His redemptive name is Jehovah Rapha. Okay? His deliverance name in the New Testament, it is fulfilled with his stripes we are healed. His word is sent to heal us and deliver us from all destruction. We've got the power and the authority to lay hands on the sick. We go with a commission. Sir, I've got the power. These two hands have got the ability to drive sickness and disease out of your body. I'm going to lay my hands on you. And when I touch you, the pain is going to get out of your body. If doubt is there, keep on speaking. Don't let doubt interrupt you. Okay? If doubt comes up and say, do you think he's going to walk? Don't say yes. Ignore doubt. There's nothing like ignoring somebody. Especially your dog. I told that in a sermon here for those who don't know. If your dog comes in, your car stops. I mean, he knows the sound. The second time you drive your new car, he, he's got the sound. You come in, he comes out. Here comes Rex. Oh, 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 oh. Tail. Oh, 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 oh. You come out, you know, you rub his head and he, oh, oh, and he jumps up and your, your, your trousers are full of mud. He licks you. Okay, Rex, okay, Rex, okay, Rex, okay, Rex. Next day you come. You are in a hurry. You fed up. Things are not working out. Here comes Rex. Oh, 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 oh. You walk. Man, get away from here. Huh? You know? Oh, 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 oh. But he tries again. Huh? Here you come the third day. You just ignore him flat. He, oh. Two eggs. Third day, you ignore him. He just lies on the grass. Fourth day, you come. He doesn't even look up. You go, you say, Rex. Are you all right? He turns his head away. Yeah. Rexy, are you all right? He turns his head the other way. I don't know if you've ever noticed. Try it. Okay. Yeah. So if you ignore that negative spirit, if you ignore that demon, that devil of negativism, I mean, he will turn his head away. He will run away from it. Don't try it. Satan come. Get away now, man. Uh, listen, sir, I'm talking to you. So you are talking to people at the same time. <laughs> you are living in two kingdoms. Ignore it. You know, you lay hands and you say, uh, in the name of the Lord Jesus. And you know, this pain is not going to go. You know, say, in the name of the Lord Jesus, look at me. Have more boldness. You know, the fight can go on here, but don't let anybody else find you have a fight. Yeah, yeah. That is your victory, okay? In the name of the Lord Jesus. Sir, you've got you to gotta listen to me. In the name of the Lord Jesus. And all the time, man, this, sir, please pay attention to me. I'm busy with you. This pain is going to go. This pain is going to go. So get away from the person. Now you are busy with God and the pain because you've got a fight on the inside. Now you don't look at the person anymore. you In the name of the Lord Jesus. Wow. You are now feeling the power from on high. Because you know the person is pulling your faith down, is drawing from you. So you don't want him to drain you. So you hear with the pain, you with God. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Wow. Close your eyes if possible. Look away if possible. But don't get the attention of the man. 
Don't get the attention of the negative spirit. Be busy with God. Whoa. Whoa, from your body flows rivers of living water. Whoa, it terminates darkness. It brings light. Wow, you feel the power. Wow, how did that feel? Ah. Okay. So there are times where you've got to connect to the person. There are times where you've got to totally disconnect from the person. And this is what we learn as we go on in our sessions. But you've got the power to lay hands on the sick and get them healed. So in the name of the Lord Jesus, your hands are a powerful weapon. It can destroy diseases. It can destroy viruses and germs. It can destroy cancer cells. Your hands can bring light into a dark life. In Jesus' name, let's get the sick healed.